president uh, discussed the policy this morning in his uh, remarks at the Rose Garden. We obviously don't have anything to add to the policy, but we're here to discuss uh, what's going on on the ground in the Persian Gulf and Operation Desert Storm, and happy to take your questions on that. Uh, General Kelly will have his uh, usual opening remarks to bring you up to date. Then Admiral McConnell has a presentation for you to uh, give you a little more information about the uh, nature and extent of the fires, the oil field fires that are still burning in Kuwait, and then we'll be pleased to take your questions. And if you'd raise your hands, then General Kelly or Admiral McConnell will recognize you. So with that, gentlemen, if you would please. Good afternoon. Today is the 41st day of uh, the operation, and actually the third day of the ground phase of the operation. There are more than 537,000 U.S. troops in the theater. I'm going to break the casualties down into several groups today. Uh, prior to the ground war, there were 23 killed, 34 wounded, 27 missing, and nine prisoners of war. Since the ground action uh, began, there are four killed in action, 21 wounded in action, two missing, and no POWs. In the Scud attack yesterday, there were 28 killed and 100 injured. The sum of those numbers are 55 killed, 155 wounded, 30 missing, and nine POWs. On Scuds, there were seven Scuds launched in the last 72 hours, two on Saturday, one on Sunday, uh, to KKMC, King Khalid Military City, and two towards Israel, and then uh, one on Monday uh, towards uh, Saudi Arabia, that was Dharan, where the casualties were uh, suffered, and one uh, towards uh, Gutter. A total of 81 Scud missiles were launched, 41 against Saudi Arabia, one against Bahrain, one against Gutter, and 38 against Israel. Enemy prisoners of war, they're estimating uh, 30,000 plus. Uh, the Turkey figures I don't have right now, but that's estimated to be in the thousands, so the total is 30,000 plus. Uh, ground equipment destroyed uh, 2,085 tanks, which represents about 50 percent, 962 armored vehicles, about one third, and 1,505 artillery pieces, or about 48 percent. Oil fires, there were 600 started, 500 are still burning, and Admiral McConnell will address that in just a minute. Uh, in ground operations, the Iraqi army is in full retreat, although there is still some fighting going on. Uh, 21 divisions in the Kuwaiti theater of operations have been destroyed or rendered combat ineffective. Over 400 tanks and numerous other vehicles have been destroyed since the ground war began. Targeting. Uh, consists of close air support, scuds, lines of communications, strategic strikes, and restrikes. Sorties are in excess of 103,000. In the last 24 hours, 3,000 plus, 1,400 plus in the Kuwaiti theater of operations. Over half of them were close air support sorties and 100, 130 against the uh, scuds. There were zero Iraqi sorties in the last 24 hours. This is their 17th straight day of no air operations. Two aircraft, however, on Sunday did fly to Iran. I believe both of them were MiG-23s. <coughs> aircraft losses, Iraq has lost a total of 103 aircraft, 42 air-to-air, -air, and that's 36 fixed wing and six helicopters, and 61 air-to-ground. U.S. Uh, air combat losses are 27. A 25 fixed wing and two helicopters. That's plus uh, four from the last time we briefed on Saturday, one OV-10, one A-6, and two AV-8Bs. Uh, Mike will now talk about some oil fires. There were a number of questions earlier about uh, who was causing the fires. We've examined that very closely, and uh, the evidence is convincing now. The vast majority of the fires were caused by Iraqi forces. Uh, not only do we have physical evidence, but we have captured documents now that indicates that their instructions were to destroy the oil fields. Uh, two instructions, inflict uh, maximum casualties, and as a part of that, also to destroy the oil fields. This is a uh, depiction of the cord that's uh, lit in this position. As you can see, it burns off 
to uh, detonate the uh, dynamite or the, the explosives that's on the oil well. Uh, this distance is anywhere from uh, 100 meters to or 50 to 100 meters, but as you can see, burn down and then blow the well. The um, first image I have to show you is on the, the 22nd of February, and this is near Kuwait City. And just to orient you, and about uh, this much of my pen, that's the international airfield. And as you can see, the, the fires, uh, in this case, the wind is blowing uh, to the southeast. The second image is a uh, similar area, a little bit further to the east. Uh, note the date on the 23rd of February. This is in the morning. And this is before the ground campaign was initiated. The ground campaign was uh, uh, 8 o'clock Washington time on the 23rd. So you can see the uh, systematic destruction of the oil, uh, oil facilities. This is Kuwait City. And in this area is where the international airport that I highlighted for you earlier. In this case, the wind has shifted. It's blowing now to the northeast and is covering the city, blanking the city in black smoke. OK, we're ready for a question. Yes, sir. You said that the uh, Iraqi army was in full retreat. Does that include the Republican guards? Have they now come out of their fortifications, and are they trying to get north into uh, Iraq? In, in some cases, they have. In some cases, they haven't. When I said the Iraqi army is in full retreat, I meant uh, over the theater. There are units that are still in position, still offering organized resistance. They are being engaged and, uh, and defeated as, as we get to them. Has the, uh, this great uh, tank <coughs> battle that we all had envisioned of the uh, uh, U.S. armored forces coming down on the Republican Guard, has that begun yet? Uh, there has not been a great tank battle. General Neal mentioned this morning that there was a tank battle going on in the southeast uh, in the vicinity of Kuwait City at the airport. And incidentally, that's quieted down now. I believe it's just after 11 o'clock at night uh, over there. Uh, the other great tank battle has not materialized yet. And uh, whether it will or not remains to be seen. Uh, we're, we're hitting pieces of those organizations and are being dispatched as that happens. General? Uh, on the end. Here. General Kelly, due to the fact that the Iraqi army is in full retreat, and there's so much, I noticed many of the soldiers had a lot of euphoria and almost disappointment to the fact that they did not get a chance to engage the enemy. Do you feel that there's a possibility or potential for some abuse here? And that how will the Pentagon manage this and control many of those, you know, jubilant, you know, young soldiers out there on the battlefield? The ones who were saying that they felt bad because they hadn't uh, run into the enemy at, uh, are the lucky ones. Uh, I think that we're making great efforts to properly care for the uh, Iraqis who come into our control. I will assure you that they're better off once we control them than they were before we control them. It's the mission of the chain of command to make sure that, uh, that deprivations do not concur. I'm certain that all leaders have been briefed on that and they're watching it very closely, and we know of none uh, to this point. Yes, sir. General, can you tell me if there was any participation by the 1st Ranger Regiment in the uh, capture of the airfield or the attack on uh, Kuwait City? No, I can't tell you that. Yep. Yes, General? sir. Uh, you mentioned that the uh, engagement at the Kuwait airfield has quieted down. Uh, has that uh, been uh, resulted in a victory for the uh, Marines and the Allied forces? Is the airfield uh, in uh, Allied control, and what about Kuwait City itself? That's undetermined right, uh, right now. Uh, tomorrow is going to come. When the sun comes up, the question in my mind will be, will the enemy still be there? Uh, but it had gotten dark, and, and both sides broke off. Uh, and uh, I would tell you that the, uh, the U.S. forces in that area are getting pretty tired right now. They've been attacking constantly for three days, so they probably need a little rest. General, General, General right what, about the, what about the rest of Kuwait City? Are there still Iraqi forces in the city itself, or is the airport as close as they're still located? We don't know if there are Iraqi forces inside Kuwait City. I'm sure I heard the same television conversations that you did. We have not entered Kuwait City yet. Uh, I think that that's going to occur shortly. Uh, when we, the coalition, do enter Kuwait City, uh, it will be with great care because just a handful of people inside a city can, can cause you a lot of problems and there could be casualties. So we'll, we'll be uh, prudent when we go in there. Yes, General, sir. does it appear now that there will be a large tank engaged with, with the Republican Guard, or are you suggesting that the engagements we have had are those where they're being destroyed in their, in their bunkers? Might we avoid a large tank engagement with them? There have been tank engagements with the Republican Guard. In each case, the result has been a very positive one for us.
whether there'll be a major tank engagement with them, whether they'll come out with large numbers of tanks uh, is something that lies in the future. I don't know. I do know that when they come out of their bunkers, they subject themselves not only to uh, friendly ground forces and friendly tank killing helicopters, but also friendly air forces. So uh, they'd have to think pretty hard before they do that. And I'd like to ask uh, Admiral McConnell if he wants to add anything to that. Just what has been detected with regard to movement. Uh, there has been some movement. We thought initially movement to engage. Then it appeared they moved back to uh, go into defensive positions. So I think there's a certain element of confusion on their part right now. They're sensing the battlefield, and they're finding pressure from all sides. So I think they're making some choices now. Is it too fast and furious for them? Is that the problem, General Kelly, and just the, the, the tempo of the battle? It's, it's hard to tell what it is for them, although I think they run into something that they couldn't conceive of before this battle began. General, yes, sir. General, uh, can you characterize for us how the Iraqi people in southern Iraq, as the U.S. forces have moved through not only desert but agricultural areas now, what's been the reaction by the Iraqi people to the U.S. force? don't have any reports at all on that, and I don't know for a fact that they have run through uh, civilian areas to this point. And General. what's the highest ranking uh, Iraqi defector or line crosser or prisoner that we have in we custody now? Look for Colonel. Colonel. General, yes, ma'am. Um, have the troops, the Iraqi troops that are uh, defending the coast against an amphibious assault, have they begun to retreat, and would that have any impact on our amphibious activity? Well, of course, we're not going to discuss whether or not we'll have an amphibious activity. Yes, in point of fact, they have begun to retreat. Yes, ma'am. General, without saying exactly where our troops are, is it possible for the Republican Guards to retreat up north? Can they escape? Uh, all things are possible. Uh, some of them are more difficult than others, and, and incidentally, uh, we expect there will be a briefing, uh, a tactical briefing from the theater probably tomorrow, so they will be able to answer that more. Can you say yeah. whether we've Authority completed table. the encirclement of southern Iraq? That's, that's what I didn't say when I answered you the first time. <laughs> yes, hey, General, what can you tell us, uh, what happens if the Republican Guard decide to stay inside their defensive dug-in positions? Do you plan on going in and after them, or do you just plan on encircling them, waiting for them to come out? Well, we will we will deal with the Republican guards whether they're in their defensive positions or not. If they elect to stay in their defensive positions and and uh, get close up on American combat forces, they're in deep deep trouble because now you have the precision air attacks, now you have the attack helicopters, now you have the uh, precision uh, tank fires and and ground missile fires like the tow and, and others. So. That would be pretty tough for them if they want to stay there. Have yes, you sir. taken Have you taken any Republican Guard prisoners yet? I don't know specifically of any re Republican Guard prisoners. It's possible, but but I just don't know for a fact. Yes. Just following on that, in light of how little resistance uh, has been encountered in this ground war, including the you know much uh, established Republican Guard and the threat that they were going to present to our troops, the question is where is the fight? in this army and what's happened to it or did it ever have it to begin with? Uh, they're all good questions. Uh, probably better addressed at Saddam Hussein than me. Uh, I know our guys are doing good and and I also know that uh, that what they didn't know before the fact is that they're running into the finest military force on earth. Uh, one that's worked very hard over a long period of time and one that's fully capable of, of closing with the enemy and capturing them or destroying them using the shock action fire but power. Why do, you think they are, why do you think they are not fighting back aggressively? Well, they've been, uh, they've been bombed for 41 days now. Uh, they've had uh, a debilitating war with Iran for over eight years where they lost a couple of hundred thousand, I think, killed. Uh, it's possible they're ba battle-weary. I don't know. I, I can't tell you what's in the heart of the Kuwaitis. I can tell you that many, many, many of the prisoners who've already been taken have been, been quite grateful that their phase of this campaign is over. Are you surprised by the lack of resistance you're encountering? Uh, pleasantly. General, for Admiral McConnell, Just one more thing. If, I, if I could offer a follow-up uh, to, to the line of questioning. Uh, we, were, we worked very hard to measure bomb damage assessment and share with you the, tech, the methodology and show on, so on. And I think perhaps what we're saying is that the delivery of the precision weapons against dug-in forces probably had more impact than, than we could measure in, in real time. So as we move closer, as the general says, 41 days of bombing with this kind of precision, it's had a tremendous impact. Now, I'd offer one other comment. Uh, the, the battlefield is confused right now on the part of the Iraqis. They're, they're having difficulty sensing from which direction they might be attacked. Yes, sir. For Admiral McConnell, for the past several days, we've heard reports of continuing Iraqi atrocities in Kuwait City. 
can you describe some of them and i know you won't describe your sources but can you say